Hey, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Math Channel. And this question here is question number 12, which is a final question from the February, March 2020 International A Level um, Cambridge 9709 Paper 1, which is a pure mathematics paper. And here we have a question about the equation of circles. So we have the information given that a diameter of circle C1 has endpoints at negative 3, negative 5, and 7, 3. Find an equation of the circle C1. Okay, so first of all, the equation of a circle is of the form x minus a squared plus y minus b squared equals r squared, where a and b are constants, and r is also r is the radius of the circle. So a and b basically are the coordinates of the center of the circle. Okay, so A and B are the coordinates of the center of the circle, and R is the radius. So, if we are able to pinpoint the center of the circle and to calculate the radius of the circle, we are then able to write down the equation of the circle in this form, which is what is required here. So, how do we find the center of a circle? Well, we know that if we have a circle, Okay, the diameter, let's say it looks like this, those two points given. Let's say that's minus 3, minus 5, and that's 7, 3. Now, if this is the diameter, we know that the center of the circle is going to be exactly halfway between these two points. So if I find the midpoint of those two points, I'll call this M. If I find the midpoint between these two points, it will give me the center of the circle. And the midpoint between two, two points on a straight line is basically given by the average of the x-coordinates. So it's going to be minus 3 plus 7 divided by 2. And the average of the y-coordinates, which is negative three, 5 sorry, plus 3 divided by 2. So the midpoint is going to be 4 over 2, which is 2, and minus 2 over 2, which is negative 1. So those, that will give us the center of the circle. So that's the value of a. And that's the value of B in this equation. But the other thing we need to know is the radius of this. And we can find the radius in a number of ways, because I, know, know, I now know the center. We can find the radius by using these coordinates and then finding, like find the, find the length of the diameter and then divide it by 2, or use the midpoint with any of these points, and that would be the radius. So we could do either of those. Now, in case we made a mistake with the midpoint, I think it's safer to use the diameter of the circle, okay, because those are already given to us. So we know that the diameter, we know that the radius is equal to the diameter divided by 2. So you're going to have the diameter, which is, using the length formula, the uh, change in the x coordinate squared. So you have x1 minus x2, so you have 7 minus minus 3 squared. Remember, the length formula, the distance between two points, a, b, is given by the difference between the x-coordinates of the point a and b squared plus the difference between the y-coordinates of the points a and b squared. This is, um, you know, basically an application of Pythagoras's theorem. Basically, so we're finding the change in x, the change in y, and the change in x. That's like the two shorter sides. You square them, add them together, and then find the square root. So that's exactly what we're doing here. So you have 7 minus minus 3 squared plus, and you have 3 minus minus 5 squared. 3 minus minus 5, all squared. Okay, and that's divided by 2 to give us the radius. So we can say that's equal to the square root of, you have that 7 plus 3, which is 10, so that's 100. And 3 minus minus 5, which is that's 8, so it's plus 64 over 2. So you have the square root of 164 divided by 2. And now, um, what goes into both of these? 4 does, right? So you're going to have basically f take 4 outside. So take, it'll be the square root of 4 times the square root of, uh, if you divide this by 4, you get 41 over 2. Okay, so the square root of 4 is 2, so these cancel out. So we can say the radius is equal to root 41 half of the diameter. The diameter would be root 41, um, 2 times root 41, the radius is root 41. Okay, 
So that's the radius of the circle. So we found the radius. And now we can use this equation. We can say that... What's happened here? Oh, sorry, I've run out of space. Let me just write the answer down here. So therefore we can say the equation of the circle, as we said, it's x minus a squared, and a is 2, 5. So 2, sorry, 2 minus 1. So the, the, the midpoint or the center of the circle is 2 minus 1, and the radius is root 41. So you have x minus a squared plus y minus b squared equals r squared. So we can say we have x minus 2 squared plus, and we have y minus minus 1, which is plus 1, squared equals the square of root 41, which is 41. So this is the equation of our circle. x minus 2 squared plus y plus 1 squared equals 41. That's the equation of the circle given circle C1. Now, so that's important for us to understand how to use the equation of a circle. And what it's made up of, the center of the circle, AB, and the radius, R. Okay, so because they gave us a diameter, we can work out the center, and we can work out the length of the radius from that as well. All right, so now for part B, it says the circle C1 is translated by H4 to give circle C2. Now, the, the, the center of the circle was 2 minus 1, right? Okay, so basically, this point, which was 2 minus 1, 2 minus 1 is translated to a point over here somewhere. It's moved to this point here. You can call this M dash. This is M. All right, so from M to M dash, okay, you have to use the vector 8, 4. So translation by the vector 8, 4. Eight, four. So basically, we take M and we add... Well, basically, this is how much it moves horizontally. So that has to be added to the x coordinate. And that's how it moves vertically. So that has to be added to the y coordinate. So m dash, the new center, is going to be 10 and 3. So the coordinates of m dash are 10, 3. This is the, the uh, center of the circle, the new circle. So, and we know the radius is still root 41 because it's translated the shape has been translated so the whole shape has moved it's congruent to the original shape it's just in a different position so the radius will stay the same with translations the radius stays the same okay so therefore we can say that the new equation for c2 is be, going to be given by x minus 10 squared and that's your a remember it was x minus a squared plus y minus b squared equals r squared plus, and you have y minus 3 squared equals r squared, which is going to be root 41 squared, which is 41. So there's the equation for C2, and that answers part B of this question. All right, so there's part A and part B done now. Now for part C. Okay, so I've got the equations of the two circles here and the diagram from before so we can see what was happening. It says the two circles intersect at the points R and S, show that the equation of the line rs is y equals minus 2x plus 13. Okay, so now, how do we go about doing this? Okay, we're going to find a nice, easy way to find the equation of this straight line. Now, to find the equation of the straight line, we need two things. Okay, we need two things. One thing we need is a point on the line. Okay, and the second thing we need is the gradient, the gradient of the line. Now, we don't have the coordinates of R and S. We can find them, actually, if we tried, because it's the solution to these equations simultaneously. But what we do have is the center of these two circles, which is kind of going to help us here. All right? Um, I know the center of this circle was 2 minus 1. And the center of this circle was 10 and 3. Now, if I join those two lines together, if I join those two centers together, what you should notice is that these two, okay, um, this chord here will cut this into two equal halves because these two circles are 
identical. All right. So basically, the midpoint of these two points is going to be a point on the line RS. And the other thing we notice is the radius meets the chord and is cut in half by it. Okay, the, the, the chord is cut in half by the radius when they meet at right angles. So these two will definitely cut this chord into two equal halves as this chord cuts that distance into two equal halves. So they're going to meet at right angles. So this line RS is perpendicular to the line MC. So the gradient of the line that we need is basically the gradient of RS. So the gradient of RS is what we need. And we need a point on the line. We can, we can say the midpoint of the midpoint of MC is going to be this point here. Okay, so that will be our point on the line. And if I know the gradient of this, which I can find very easily, then the gradient of this line will be the negative reciprocal of that. So I have been able to find what I need, therefore, to find the equation of the line. And hopefully we'll get this. So let's see. First of all, let's find the midpoint of MC. So we're going to take um, 10. Let me call this point. Uh, let me call it point P, the midpoint of MC. So we have 10 plus 2 over 2. That's the x average of the x coordinates of MC. And 3 plus, or you could say minus 1 um, plus 3 divided by 2. Add them together. That's going to give you 12 over 2, which is 6. And you're going to have 2 over 2, which is 1. So th this point is 6, 1. P has got the coordinates of 6, 1. And we need to find the gradient of the line R of, of MC first. The gradient of the, I mean, I call this C. I, could have called it, I should have called it something else, but no problem. The gradient of the line MC is going to be the change in Y over the change in X. So 3 minus minus 1 over 10 minus 2. That's going to give you 4 over 8, which is a half. Okay, so that means the gradient of our line, RS, is going to be the negative reciprocal, which is minus 2, which looks looks right. right? So it's quite steep and it's negative. So we now know the point, P, 6, 1. And we know the gradient of the line, RS, which is minus 2. And that will help us find the equation of the of the straight line. So we know that we could use y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So we have y minus 1 equals m, which is negative 2, times x minus 6. So you have y minus 1 equals minus 2x plus 12. Add 1 to both sides, so y equals minus 2x plus 13. And I think that's exactly, yes, exactly what we had to show. So that's one way of answering this question. There are other ways we could do it. For example, I could have found the coordinates of R and S and then used those two points to find the gradient and to find the equation of the line um, by basically, um, you know, this equation, solving these two equations simultaneously. So what I could have done, because they're both equal to 41, I could have said that this is equal to that. I want to find the X and Y values where they're equal to each other. Right, where they will intersect is where they'll be equal to each other. Um, but they have to be equal to the same thing, which in this case they are. And then when you expand the brackets and simplify, it will give you an X and Y value for, you know, you have two X values and two Y. You'll be able to find where they intersect, basically. But that's, that's going to be very long-winded. This is a way uh, easier, much easier way of doing it. And I'm also pretty sure that if you were to replace the y in this equation with minus 2x plus 13 that will satisfy this equation okay you will get a um an expression which you get exactly the same expression if you put y equals minus 2x plus 3 into this equation you will end up with the same um the same equation all right and then that would basically show that they're also um that they intersect at these two points because this, this, this causes both of those to ha give you the same x values. But I think this is a, the, the way that's intended here and probably the easy way of dealing with this question. So there's the answer to part C 
of 12. Now for part D. It says, hence show that the x coordinates of R and S satisfy this equation. So we know that this line, okay, passes through these two circles. All right. So we could actually choose either of these two equations and show that when this, um, when you replace the y with minus 2x plus 3, when you solve these two equations simultaneously, you'll end up with this equation. So let's, let's do that. And I'll show you how it works for both of them. Let's see for C1. You don't have to do it in both. You can do it in either. Okay. But if you take y equals minus 2x plus 13 and replace the y here with that, you have x minus 2 squared plus you have minus 2x plus 13 plus 1 squared equals 41 and if you were to expand this it should and so and, and simplify it should give you this so you have x squared minus 4x plus 4 plus and you're going to have um, minus 2x plus 14 squared equals 41 so x squared minus 4x plus 4 plus now this is going to give you minus 2x all squared which is 4x squared minus 28 x doubled is minus 56 x and 14 squared is 14 squared is 196 so plus 196 equals 41 okay so now this gives us 5x squared which is looking promising minus 4x minus 56x is minus 60x which looks promising and we have 4 plus 196 which is 200 so you have plus 200 minus 41 equals 0. And 200 minus 41 is 159, isn't it? Yes. So we've got exactly what we had to show. 5x squared minus 60x plus 159 equals 0. So we've shown it. That shows, okay, that um, they this satisfies, that the x1 of R and S satisfy this equation. When you solve this equation, you're going to find where this intersects with that. Okay, the places where this intersects with that, which will be the same places where this intersects with that. So or we could have alternatively, we could have put this into C2 instead. So if we see what happens when we do that, we have x minus 10 squared plus, you have minus 2x plus 13. That's going to give you minus 2x plus 13 minus 3. So it's going to be minus 2x plus 10 squared equals 41. So let's see what happens here. You have x squared minus 20x plus 100 plus, and you're going to have 4x squared. You have minus 20x minus 40x plus 100 equals 41. So you have 5x squared. We've got minus 20 minus 40, which is minus 60x. 200 minus 41 again, which is 159 equals zero so it shows whichever way we did it whether we substituted this into the c1 equation or the c2 equation we still got the same thing that we had to show which shows that the x coordinates of r and s satisfy this equation so if i was to solve this equation i would find the x coordinates of where they intersect but they didn't ask us to do that they only asked us to show that um you know solving this equation will give us the values of R and S. So that's the answer. And that's the end of this question and the end of the whole of this paper. Okay, so that completes this, this uh, paper, which is the February, March 2020 International A-Level Cambridge 9709 exam. Other questions from this paper can be found in the playlist that will appear in this section over here. Other questions from um, this topic of equations of circles and coordinate geometry in general, they also have straight line graphs here. So I, I guess I'll put it into both equations of circles and also straight line graphs as well. I'll put it in both of those playlists. And you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. And the card at the top there, which has appeared during the video, will take you to another video which shows you how to use my channel to find what you're looking for in an efficient way. Thank you for watching and see you soon.